It's a cloudy Wednesday morning and I'm off to film a wedding in Lancaster. Um, I say I, not we, as I'm shooting this one alone for reasons which will become apparent very soon. This was July. Just dropping the dog off. Come on then, let's get you out. We are here, we are here at Her Majesty's wedding, yeah. right? and what we have here, right, is Donna, who got married in... December 2017. We filmed that, and there's Heather... April who got 2018. Jeez Louise. Right, okay, so they wanted to appear in one of the vlogs, yeah! and, then, and then Heather came up with a better idea. What was your idea, Heather? Uh, we need to wear our password. Yeah, we do. With the current queen in her wedding dress. So these past three brides, well, current brides as well, right. we're going to do a single along in a car. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so this is Matthew, who's Donna, who was just here before. Um, he's just found out that we are having three bridesmaids, one of them, sorry, three brides, one of them who was his back in December. Is that correct? December? December 2017. 2017. Um, I think he got a little bit jealous. Carpool karaoke. Is all you want. So you might remember me saying to you uh, earlier on that uh, I was shooting that wedding alone and the reason was is because we are currently in France. Where are we? Ru Ruin? Ruin? Uh, my English pig accent will never get that right. Uh, because we're, tomorrow we're shooting uh, a wedding in Côte de Mer. So the reason I shot that last wedding alone is because Lisa had to get packed and then as soon as I got back from that wedding, I had a quick shower and then we drove straight to Dover, well you did, um, and then we got, caught the ferry and then drove straight from Calais to Rouen, Rouen um, which was completely exhausting. Yesterday we were just like zombies walking around. We didn't mm. take a bit of the culture in, didn't we? Yeah. So we wanted to give our, our experience on destination weddings. Now this is the first time we drove to one. Um, previously we have uh, We've flown, which has its own stresses because when you go through the airport control, obviously you have to unpack all your bags and all your equipment out. It's just quite stressful when you've got thousands of people behind you. But this one had its own sorts of problems because the drive, as I explained, was completely shattering. We, we, we were awful yesterday, weren't we? Yeah. We were just like zombies. One of the other things with destination money as well is the actual logistics because planning it, um, it takes quite a bit because you dealt with all Everything. That really didn't <laughs> <Yeah>. everything. <laughs> yeah, we had to we had to put stickers on the you car. Put, we had to yeah, change the lights. Change the headlight. Just make sure that you do your research. You know, there's a lot there's a lot to factor into it. And one of the big things is making sure that you stick to the speed limits. Yes, <laughs> because well, that was one of the most stressful yeah. things. Yet driving yeah. yesterday, not not or driving on the opposite side. It was actually keeping to the yeah. very slow speed limits. So we often see that um, when. Uh, other photographers, videographers take on destination wedding. They might do it quite cheaply, or even just say you just pay for our accommodation and, and flights, and that's it. But I mean, what, what we had to factor in because we've had to factor in in the past, even when it's flying, it's uh, um, uh, fuel to the airport, uh, airport parking, yeah. uh, transfers when we get over there. Hotels. They, you know, because one that we're shooting abroad next year, that the. Um, came to about 800 pound didn't it the actual just uh, for the travel just expenses. for the tra travel and yeah so if you're taking on board a destination wedding don't skimp on your prices you have your basic rates which you would have for any UK wedding and then work out you because some people just say oh put a couple hundred quid on it doesn't work out like that so today we're just spending a couple of hours just in ruin again and then we're gonna drive down I think it's about an hour and a half drive to yeah. uh, Côte de Mer um, for uh, Ailsa and Kevin's wedding so we kind of limit ourselves to uh, one or two destination weddings a year um, because they are hard work because you do have to take time off either side so a minimum of three days where possibly you could be shooting another wedding as well you know so you've got to arrive on one day and um, leave on the next but although we are arriving we arrived two days before and we're 
leaving three days after because yeah. uh, we're going to make a little bit of a holiday um, from it. We are having a barbecue tonight, which they have invited us to, so we can meet everybody. Andy, the photographer, photographer who, uh, who recommended us for this job, um, he's arriving very shortly, so we'll meet him because we're both staying in the same place. They've provided us with uh, lodgings for tonight and tomorrow, um, so that kind of eliminates any costs for them, you know, for actual uh, in, in our package. <laughs> The stripper's willy. Although this is primarily a wedding video vlog, a big chunk of our work is corporate and commercial. I've heard some people say that that sort of work can lead to quite boring filming environments. Not really experienced that myself. But if you are a wedding videographer and you're not sourcing work outside of that area, then you are kind of missing a trick really. So that little bit of footage that you saw at the beginning of the vlog, um, that took place at a local council building. Now seven, eight years ago, we I walked into that building saying, hello, I'm a videographer and I'm looking for work, do you have any? Which they did. Um, that led to some consistent work with them, leading on to other councils and small businesses, larger businesses. And you end up creating this whole other network outside of the wedding industry. Because at the end of the day, this is a job and you have a job to make money so you can put a roof over your head, feed the kids, pay the bills, go on holiday. So one of the major and more attractive differences between wedding and commercial is the times that they take place. Weddings are usually uh, at the weekends and commercial take place, as far as we're concerned, between a Monday and Friday. There can be a battle for balance uh, in your calendar with commercial and wedding, because weddings usually book you at least 12 months in advance, where a commercial job could be the next day or the next week. So we find that we have to kind of limit ourselves during the summer and do a lot more during the winter. Uh, take for instance, in August, uh, we've got our busiest month uh, for weddings, but we're only doing two or three commercial jobs. And speaking of August, we've just around the corner got a very busy month. So to those who will be working for and with, see you there.